Hey, welcome back. I thought it might be interesting to run through a couple of combats and see how the combat system works and some of the refinements that have gone on for small scale combat and, and how that sort of differs from regular combat. And there's really only a couple of instances where it occurs, so it won't uh, you know, be a massive learning curve, excuse me, or anything like that. Uh, so let's let's have a quick look here and see if we can't sort of get a, a feel for what's going on. <clears throat> so you may note, if we zoom in a little bit here, that this font is actually pink and this font is actually blue. And of course that blue will be a different shade uh, depending on, uh, you know, what, what color the background is. But basically that's the story. If I have a division with white, a white font, or a formation with any other, basically any other color font, uh, they are regular sized units. And so we'll, uh, that's where you would have this disparity in force capability. And so, a, and these air, uh, air mobile guys, regiments are considered to be battalions, basically, uh, for, for fighting purposes. So, this would be a, a large unit fighting against a smaller unit, and I would just give this guy a defensive value of one, which is this five here. We would treat it as a one. And when I'm using air, uh, I, I'm going to get a 50% bonus on whatever the air, whatever the strike value is for that air unit. So it'd be 10 to one from the outset. All right, so that's that's how when you've got units of disparate sizes like that, sort of getting into it when they have these colored uh, these colored doohickeys, colored fonts. So, but uh, just two guys finding out, two small units finding out. We just use their combat values is the way I read the rules. And so, in this particular case, I would uh, take uh, and I used air. I actually attacked from here to here, and there was another unit here. This guy. And he was also a small scale unit. So it was going to be uh, basically a one to one, right? F uh, four versus four. Uh, so then I advanced to here and my next, my next idea uh, really was to attack again and try and push this guy out of the way because I have some supply challenges going on here. And the only place that I can, now that I've captured that airfield, it needs to be repaired. Well, in order to repair it, I need six supply points there. And the only way I can get them there is if, if I have a landing craft that can drop off into the hex six, which I don't have. I, don't, I have three up in this whole theater. So, and they're kind of busy in a task force right now down in the south trying to uh, plan an invasion of Narvik. So... We're kind of SOL here. So this is the pickle I've got myself into, trying to do too much too soon. So I've had to do a, more combats than I thought I would to dislodge the unit out of the airfield. I've got to repair the airfield, and by doing these attacks, when you use the advanced, and by the way, optional, supply rules, uh, you every time you conduct an attack, you know, you're going to use one ammo, and then you're going to use another ammo. Now the good news is, all these guys, uh, the Soviets, all come with three. So he has one attack left in him, right? So he can now decide, decide hey, I, I want to attack this guy. So we can go four versus four. It's going to be a one-to-one -one attack. And at this point, because I had to use a lot of air to secure a port earlier on, I have no air assets left up here. And it's a real, real problem, right? Uh, so... So what I've actually done now that I, 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 as I'm talking through this, I realized that, so yes, I did have this extra attack that I could do with this guy. So I'm just going to put him to one side like this because I wrote, I rotated to this chap to let him attack first. And uh, he had a one up like this and he'd already taken a step loss. And so things are looking kind of grim for him, but he was uh, going to get after it and attack into here. So he's going to spend his four movement points uh, to do the uh, a standard assault. Uh, because that just looked like a good idea to me. It gives me the full strength of the of the unit, etc. <clears throat> and that would be a one to two attack. Yeah, kind of risky, right? 
He's going to get a, a benefit of plus two because he has two units adjacent, making some sort of concentric attack bonus that's there. So that would be a plus two. And I'm just going to check to make, check these off as I go through and make sure I did get them all right. Uh, there would be, he was not flipped earlier on. Uh, so his cadre rating was going to be a four. This guy is a three and the, the Soviets are a one. So that'd be a plus one for the Soviet chap. Uh, so that would give him a plus three. And then what was the other? Uh, and so then I think, what else do they have here? Cadre rating. I'm just looking down the list real quickly to make sure I get this all right. Cause no doubt someone will go, oh, that's wrong. Uh, so I think that's all his bonuses that he was able to gather for himself. Now the defender is going to get two for the terrain because it's Arctic rough. He's going to get, uh, well, so he's got, actually going to get uh, probably a, a malice, which I did not capture last time of minus one. So it'd be a minus one for the uh, cadre rating. So this is where I'm not sure whether we, uh, Count it twice, once for the attacker, once for the defender. I'm sure when uh, Fabrizio sees the video, he'll yell at me and tell me. Uh, but I'm also going to get plus one. Uh, let's say if I'm using this guy, I'm going to get plus one because he is, he is, uh, well, he's flipped now. So there will be no cover rating adjustment. Uh, so that's why there's not that. Uh, so he, they're both flipped. They're both going to be five in this instance. Um, he's taken a step loss though. So that's gonna be a plus one for the defender. So that's plus three. Stay with me here, folks. Uh, attacking at one to two odds gets a plus one. So that would be another plus one. So that's now plus four for them. The enemy is not ammo rationing at this point. There are no engineers or active defense. It's an air mobile battalion, but I note that that is a under an iron sky rule 9.17. So if you wanna, hang out with me while I check that. I'll see if that applies in Deadly Northern Lights as well. 9.17. Is it 17 or seven? It's 17, 9.17. Uh, yeah, the rules numbering has changed. So I don't think that applies to these guys. And that was one of the things that I, I missed here, but that will still net us, I think I said that was a net four for those guys, and it's gonna be actually five for the attacker. So uh, defender minus attacker, it's gonna give us a minus one to the die roll. So I go to the, I go to the uh, combat results table, and I'm gonna zoom out now. And, and I, I kind of like this format of the table, actually. I, I'm kind of fussy about combat results tables. See here, we go to the one to the two table, one to two table, and we go to the zero combat mod column on the left. And then we can see that if I get a minus one, it's better than a, than a plus one, right? The D, C, A1, and A2 results, you can probably guess what they are. The defender is gonna take a loss on the D. The C is a contact ending all combat, A1, attacker loses. And obviously attack is two uh, for a two. So a minus one is a good uh, a good modifier to have. Obviously more modifiers is better. So in this particular instance, <clears throat> what did I roll? So let's go back and now just check this to see if I get a different result, which would be really cool. Instead of it being a plus one, it's gonna be a minus one. I rolled a nine. Yeah, still a contact. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think I had it at a, as a uh, as an A one uh, result last time. So a contact is better. That means I'm finished, right? So this guy can't do anything else, and he is now at ammo two. He's got one attack left. I could have had one more chance, and it's skinny chance as it is, right? Uh, it would be one one more chance to have at him. So then I would want to do it with this guy. Well, I did do it with this guy, and it's basically the same result, except that uh, it's a minus two this time, uh, but actually it's not a minus two, because in, in this case, he hasn't taken any losses, 
and he's flipped on the die roll result he, uh, earlier on. So his card row rating is five versus the three, I think it is for the Soviet. Is it three for the Soviet guy? Let's check him. I keep forgetting. Cat one's a four, so that'd be a one difference. So you can see that there would be a slightly different result there. And I, nevertheless, I rolled a contact again. So I'm stuck. So I've dug myself this absolutely sticky, shitty situation here. Uh, I've knocked out the one guy, captured the field, can't land any aeroplanes at it until I, until I, <laughs> until I get some supply in there. Can't get supply in there because I don't have any ships or air that can land there. So I'm gonna airdrop it and you only get a third of what you drop. So I'm gonna get four in and I'm gonna have to do it again next turn and uh, and wait another turn. And these guys all only have, he's up to, uh, I think he only did one attack. So he's got two attacks left. He's got one attack uh, and he's got one attack. I'm not even gonna try and do this uh, this other attack here. Uh, maybe I will, I don't know. We'll see, I'd hate him to counter attack me and then uh, I'd be on limited ammo and then they'd recapture the airfield. That would make me very sad. Uh, oh, and here's the other thing. I have to push this guy out of here because I can't land. Uh, I can't even airdrop into this hex at this airfield because it's in a zone of control. Oh man, have I dug myself a hole. It is deep, my friends. Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you. <laughs> All right, talk to you soon. Bye.